All right, welcome back, folks. It's the next day, bright and early in the morning. Starting out with Miss, Mr. Vic here. Figured we should try to get the bleeders loose. Rear one here will not budge. The caliper is made out of aluminum, so we're gonna try a little, a little bit of heat on that. These usually don't end well, just FYI. Pretty fair amount of pressure on that. Usually what happens if these do break loose, typically all the threads will come with it. And heat up the bleeder itself. I know that's kind of counterintuitive to what you would think, but See, the aluminum pulls away the heat so fast that that's actually cool to the touch right now. That's kind of the kind of the stinker of aluminum. You have to keep the heat right on it. Especially if it has like, you know, a source of liquid in it. You know, like a cylinder head and stuff. They just, the heat just goes away so quickly. Boy, as soon as that heat goes, all right, let's go back in with it. Nope, she's not going back in. Like I said, it may be taking all the threads too, it's really difficult to say. That's back in. We don't have to have it out all the way, we just need to crack it loose enough to make it work. That seems to be about as far as we're gonna go right there. Should be enough to get it open. Interesting that it's not dripping right now though. Maybe plugged, I'm gonna spray it with a little Panther P and we'll hope for the best. No, oh, not such a happy ending on this side. What are you gonna do? We were working it. And the bleeder was dripping, so that was good. And then she locked right up tight. Wouldn't, wouldn't budge. Like I say, oftentimes heat in aluminum doesn't end well. As it did not in this case. It did not end well. Trigger warning, we're gonna pinch off the brake hose with a pair of hose pinching pliers. So we're gonna have to put a caliper on it, at least one, possibly two. I'm gonna see if that bleeder over there, if I can get that working a little better. pads out of here. Looks like it's got brand new brakes on it. Brand new. There we go. Let's get these out. I'll go wash these off. In the sink with some soapy water. As they say on YouTube, wait for the new caliper to show up and get that baby put back up on there. This is the bleeder from the other side. I don't know how it'll show up on camera, but yeah, I pulled every single thread out of the aluminum. And this is typically what happens. You know, the aluminum corrodes to the steel, and I mean, that's it. They, these only usually work in our state for about the first year. And then if you take the bleeder out, this is what happens. You know, whether you heat it or not, oftentimes this is what you get. So we're gonna end up doing a caliper on both sides uh, just to be safe. Cause even though this one was, you know, was moving technically, you know, if it doesn't seal perfectly, it's just a bigger problem. Pretty much standard procedure here at this point, folks. 
We got us our reman caliper here from Napper. Uh, not a sponsor, of course. Make sure their pins are freed up here. Sometimes you get the reman stuff, you never know. We'll put a little gre grease on it. Help our hardware from seizing up here in the future. These painted brackets usually last quite a while. By that I mean you get a couple years out of them, typically, before they start getting all crusty. I don't know who, who's remanning calipers for Napa now. It switches back and forth. Sometimes it's Cardone, sometimes it's BBB Industries. I haven't looked lately to see where they're sourcing them from. Stick that there and we'll put our... <laughs> Whoa, dude. on there I think I yeah I think I already showed you guys the bleeder right from the other side I should have known better like I say the aluminium does not fare well in the salt states in my experience so make sure your pads can move nice and freely in your bracket kind of get them set there a little bit in the middle Grease up our caliper. I don't know if there's something you can do to prevent these from seizing. It's kind of a difficult thing. You know, you take out the you take out the bleeder, and then of course there's you know brake fluid all over the threads. That's super corrosive. Um, so, you know, if you took them out and put, you know, anti-seize on them, I don't know. Not sure. We'll tighten all this down once we get it on the vehicle. While I was waiting for nap, I filled up our pressure bleeder because it inevitably it's empty. It's always empty. I fill it all the time. <laughs> At least that's the way it always seems anyhow. So I put two gallons of the dot four in there. That's what we'll be flushing this system out with. I went ahead and bled out the bleeder. It's a Brannock. It's a old school pressure pot that goes on the master cylinder. I've set it about 18 to 20 PSI, somewhere in that neighborhood. Got that all hooked up and ready to go. I think what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll just do an initial bleeding because we're going to have air, you know, obviously air in the ABS valve, air in the lines, air in the caliper. We'll just uh, I'll go through one wheel at a time. We'll open it up, let it spit out its initial bit of air. We'll see what the pedal and stuff feels like. We may have to go through the automated bleed procedure. Sometimes you don't have to. Sometimes you get real lucky. Pedal feels good, everything's good. Probably could have brought over some kind of air tool here, huh? But we didn't. Oh, we're getting close, there's that one. All right, here we go. Hopefully torque wrench is still on. Oh, it is. I'm going to get a little bit of stroke on this one. There's that one. 100 and something. 148, I think they were. There's that one. 154 is where we ended. And then what were these? I already did the other side, so everything's still set. 38, it tells us. Pound feet of torque. Oh, we got a spinner. Let's get a wrench for that. And or a pair of needle nose that we had sitting out. Doesn't take much usually. There we go. Happy days. 
when you put your banjo back in, make sure that your, your brake line is clean where the copper washers go. I've already cleaned this one off. Off camera while we're waiting for the calipers to show up. Uh, there is some sort of torque spec on this. I didn't look it up, but I will. After I smush this down, we'll look it up and we'll come back through and we'll torque that to factory specs off camera. All right, you, be, you better believe it. And then one thing we didn't do is we didn't check to make sure that the reman caliper had a working bleeder. That may sound silly, but we've had them come in stripped out, snapped off, non-functioning. This guy just went to try to tighten it. All right, this one works, opens and closes. All right. Whoa, whoa. Everything's hitting the floor. Son of a. Let's see. We'll crack open our bleeder. I'll hook my little hose to it. Oh man, we already got food back here. I'm gonna let this sit here and bleed out until it comes out clear. Hopefully our little hose stays on there. Keeps from making a big old mess. Just some quarter inch clear tubing. Got some pretty nasty food coming out of it right now. So I'm gonna let that go until it comes clear. There should be a time when a bunch of air comes out of it. Yeah, like right now. It's pushing a bunch of air through it. Oh yeah, lots of air coming through there now. So that's probably the air from the line there above the ABS valve. It's important when you're doing these ABS valves, line, brake lines, anything on these trucks that uh, if you run the mash cylinder dry like we did, don't step on the brake pedal. Because <laughs> if you get air in the master cylinder, it, it's kind of a pisser because now you've got to bleed out the master cylinder, which is a little more tricky. But if, as long as you don't step on the brake pedal once it's dry, usually you're in good shape. All right, we're just gonna let this keep flowing for a little bit here and do this all four wheels. Both of the rears are flowing nice clean fluid. Oops, ready tighty dude. We'll tighten up this bleeder. Pour our little rubber hose off. Now we'll go up to the front. Now, we're, granted, we haven't loosened up the front bleeders yet. Hopefully they play nice. They look like they're relatively new calipers. Maybe I was daydreaming. Oh, they look pretty good. Oh yeah, she cracked right there. We'll get our hose up here. Stick that over the end of the bleeder. You're loose. That's gonna have a lot of dirty fluid in it because of all the fluid that's in the caliper already. And we're gonna let this sit here and run. It's already pushing out quite a bit of air. So I'll let this go for a while, let this one run clean, then we'll jump over to the uh, right front. Really doesn't matter what order you do them in. Do them like this. They're all independent circuits in the ABS valve anyways because this has stability control so you've got two rear two rear lines on a truck like this instead of a single rear line. Back in the day, depending on how the system was made, you always did the right rear, left rear, right front, left front was usually your bleed procedure. And then some ABS systems you did kitty corners, you know, left front, right rear, they were on the same circuit. So it really depends on what you're working on these. I find it really doesn't matter. I think when you do the automated bleed, I think GM has you starting in the front. Uh, we don't have to do it that often, the automated procedure, because typically just bleeding them works just fine. I usually, I'll do that if somebody has, you know, had a blown brake line and they've just dro drove and drove and drove and, you know, been, things been ran empty forever, then, then it usually becomes an issue, so. I'll let this go for a while. So that's the power bleeder. I just shut it off the G300 Brannock and things have been the same since like the 70s. Hooks onto the master cylinder up here. 
throw a little chain around it, pressurizes it, well, it puts in pressurized brake fluid. So it replenishes as it pressurizes. That's their motto. We have to pump it up slowly because we need to push out our rear calipers. Feel half bad. Still a little spongy though. So grab the scan tool. Pedal feels pretty decent. We're gonna do the uh, automated brake procedure here. Brake bleed procedure. Connect uh, necessary brake bleed equipment. 12 volt battery charger. Ignition on. In park. Okay. Connect the bleeder ball to the vehicle at 300 kilopascals. Do not open any bleeder until instructed. Well, we're not 300 kilopascals. We're about 20 PSI, so we're about 150 kilopascals-ish. Which shouldn't matter, we just don't want to run out of fluid. Oh, making an oil pump running, so that's good, didn't run before. And then we wait. I believe it starts on the right front, that's why I'm kind of jumping the gun coming over here. Let's the other side. Try to do this without getting brake fluid all over everything. There we go. Get our little hose in there. Hopefully we're right. Used to be on the older GMs, you had to have two people to do this. You always had to hold your foot on the brake. I don't I think the last one of these I did, you didn't have to. Okay. Connect the bleeder bottom to the right front bleeder screw. Open the bleeder screw. Brake fluid will be under pressure. Warning. Okay, it is open. It continues. Whoa! We got a squirter. There's some air. It's on a 60 second countdown. Whoa! Lots of noise going on over there. Not really pushing out a lot. Oh, there's some air. Oh, there she goes. That's why I like using a clear hose because you can see when you got air coming. Yeah, lots of air coming out of there now. Fifteen seconds remaining. Four seconds, it says. Pushing out a pretty fair amount of air still. Close the right front bleeder, it says. There's still some air coming out, so I'm gonna leave it open for a second. Oh, it might be air sucking around our tube. Fluid's still a little bit foamy. I just wanna wait till it looks pretty clear, then we'll close it off. All right, that one is closed. Hit continue. Oh, please wait. Go ahead, turn that off for a second. Make sure this one's closed, that one's closed tight, and then I believe we're gonna end up on the left front, but it's probably going to give this little ABS pump a cool down period. And we start all over again. Basically, we're just going to carry out this process all the way around. 
and then when we get done, we're going to end up having to program that. Hopefully, we don't get burned. Hopefully, she programs. But we were, we're in it deep now, boys. Noisemaker's over. I'm letting the rear, the rear pushed out quite a bit of foam. I want to make sure the fluid is coming out nice and clear. If your if your brake fluid is foamy, ultimately it'll turn into a big air bubble in there. Uh, the left rear in particular. So you you start with the um, right front, and then in the back, the first one you do on the rear circuit's the left rear. That one was pretty foamy. I'm going to do the left rear. I'm going to let that run some more. This right rear looks pretty clean now pretty clear so this one should be good I just don't want to have to do the process over again typically you don't have to usually it's kind of a one-time deal as long as you haven't been up there just pumping the crap out of the pedal you know getting everything all whipped up and foamy that's been my experiences you just leave the pressure pot on there let it do its thing don't do a lot of pedal pumping and at this point it's up to us whether we think it's good or not to even, you know, even tell you. See if the pedal's still spongy. Please repeat if it is. So I think we're gonna be okay. Kind of a quick and dirty for you. If you were, if you if you do a heavy Chevrolet and you blow your brake line and you did drive it home and you ran it out of fluid and the master cylinder's got air and the ABS valve has air in it, just bleed them conventionally. You know, get your buddy up in there. Push on the brake, open the bleeder, get them bleeding good. When it looks like you have good flow, your pedal's still spongy, you can't figure out why. Take it out just on some wet grass or anything slippery and do a couple ABS stops with it. Just, you know, get, get going, jam on your brakes, let the ABS pump kick on, you know, a couple times or, you know, you can jack up if the vehicle's on the lift, just, you know, kick it in four drive, run it, you know, step on the brake, get the ABS to cycle. Try to get it to cycle all four wheels, all four inlet and outlet valves. And if there's any uh, fluid or any air in the pump and you don't have a scan tool to do the automated procedure, that will usually push it out. Usually once that happens, once the ABS kicks on, your pedal gets real spongy, you take it back home, bleed it again, and then usually you're home free. The problem with that is the majority of Chevy trucks are missing the fuse out of the ABS because the ABS pump's bad. People yank the fuse or the speed sensor's bad, they yank the fuse, so you can't even do that. You can't do the automated procedure or, and you can't do the you know skid on wet grass procedure so you know just do the best you can but if your abs does work which is kind of rare on these things um at least in my experience in our part of the world it is um you know like i say do a couple abs stops if you don't have a scan tool for it we do need to make sure everything is high and dry up here i didn't check yet we didn't see anything dripping usually if you have a leak it's a big one that all looks good the two lines coming into it look good all right everybody's happy up here uh, as I mentioned uh, we're gonna take and blast that down with some fluid film because we did have to take some of that plastic coating off the lines to get the nuts to spin oops we'll give it a full douching Make sure we get everything. Blast these front ones. We'll hit the motor. That way in a couple years when this baby's down at the Wilbur she pulling a bath. Boy, somebody will hit the jackpot with this one. Perfect. This bad boy should be done. Looks nice and clear now. So we'll close that off. Yeah, it's kind of a shame how fast these trucks run out. Ten years is about the limit. Ten years. You know, if you don't do anything, if you don't do fluid film or crown or whatever. That's the end of it. Ten years and it's over. It's done. $75,000 down the drain. 
whatever these trucks cost nowadays. Be sure to turn off your power bleeder before you go in and pump it up. Otherwise it'll give you a false sensation of goodness. Oh, we got a stiffy now. Oh yeah, she's good boys. Yeah, squeaker. I like it. Feels great. Plugged our scan tool dongle. We're gonna loosen up our chain. Now it's gonna have a little pressure on it because I didn't, usually what I'll do is I'll shut this off when I met my last bleeder and let the pressure out of the master cylinder. This time I didn't. So we're gonna get a little psh. Oh, it's like opening a can of coffee. Psh. Except I think they're under vacuum instead of pressure. So now we're gonna kick it on. We're gonna finish filling up our reservoir. Our brakes look pretty new all the way around it. So we're gonna fill it right up to the max line. Again, we use DOT four fluid instead of three. Big performance upgrade on the Chevy. They are compatible with each other. If your system takes three, you can put four in it, but not vice versa. You can't go from three to four, at least you shouldn't. All right, so there's that. Set that bad boy down there. The DOT4 has just a slightly higher boil point. So when you're coming down the hill and you got the brakes just a cooking on your Chevy, you're good. So the next part is we have to go through and program the EBCM using TechLine Connect. Didn't give us any options. Current uh, calibration numbers are all unrecognized. All right, so we're gonna program it with the latest and greatest software from General Motors. So we'll let this go. Uh, the GM Tech Line connects pretty hit or miss. Pretty happy to see that it's working today. It's always good. All right, that baby's done. I don't know if we have any other uh, procedures we have to do. Before we do anything else, let's uh, just look in service data real quick. Let's see, we still had on the scan tool here. Replacing program control module or reprogram control module. Uh, to program the replacement or existing control module, perform the following repairs. That's for unsuccessful. Oh, yeah, basically XS SPS, which is what we just did over there. Uh, on the SPS controller screen, select EBCM, follow the on screen instructions. On the SPS Support screen, select K17 configuration, and then setup while following on screen instructions. Ew. So, I don't remember seeing a uh, configuration and setup. I'll pop back in there and see, just to be sure. I figured there would be some sort of uh, something else extra. Well, that's it. When you're working on a General Motors and you want to know how to install and program any module uh, when you're in service data you search for control module references and then it's going to give you the list of all the control modules and then it gives you the schematics repair instructions and then how to program and set up um, usually you look at that before you do something like what we did so i just reselected the ebcm and there is a setup and configuration so we'll hit next now that we've programmed it so this is why we looked in service data <laughs> that's why we should have looked first um, so we'll go through whatever procedure it has here. Oh, interesting. It's going to, usually it has you do stuff, uh, you know, brake pressure, sensor calibration, brake pedal position, things like that. It's doing the ECU configuration, it says. So we'll wait and see how long this takes. Not very long. Uh... Please select one or more of the functions, adaptive pressure control relearn. Yep, that's what I thought. And then brake control module setup. So we will hit next. Uh, place the front wheels and steering wheel in the straight ahead, then press next. Stand by. Wheels are straight ahead. Check the ignition is on. Check. Please wait establishing communication that says. Please turn the ignition off and press next. 
the ignition switch is in the off position. Oh, now we have to wait 20 seconds. Turn on the ignition, press next. The ignition is on. We've pressed next and it's done the uh, brake pressure sensor calibration, the yaw, right sensor reset, uh, steering position reset. And we cycle it from off to on. Looks like we did everything, everything's green and happy. Check the ignition and on, press next. We'll probably have to go through and clear out some uh, codes. Oh, please ensure the hydraulic system is bled to perform the test successfully. It is. Please ensure the following conditions are met. Park the vehicle on a flat level surface. The temperature of the brake controller must be between 38F and 190F. Transmission park in neutral. Start the engine idle. Stay off the brake and fully release the accelerator. It's fired up, boys. what it's doing at this part of the process. Turn it off and press next. Copy that. Press next and we wait. Last time it said minutes, now it's counting seconds. Interesting. Turn on, press next. Man, this truck just keeps turning me on and turning me off. All right, what, what did it do? Adaptive pressure control relearn, that's what it looks like. And then we're finished. Bada bing, bada boom. Pass, pass, configuration set up. Double pass, so that's good. Guess we can, eh, we'll clear the codes with the, uh, oops. We'll close out of here. We'll clear the codes with the other scan tool there. So we'll unplug our shivy dongle. I guess we could have just used our OEM scan tool, but we'll unplug that little guy. And we'll plug in the, the Altel. I'm gonna have to give it the old reach down here. He's gotta have so many stinking scan tools. Scan to over there, scan to over there. So we'll let this get reloaded, I'm gonna scan everything. Oftentimes it'll put a bunch of no-com codes and other modules. Yeah, so as I suspected, she's littered full of lost com codes and valid data, all kinds of garbage. Yeah, which is pretty common after programming a module. If you read through service data, it will tell you the same thing. So I'll let it go through and do all of its code clears. Hopefully there's no codes in the ABS module. It says there's not, so that's good. All this for one silly little code. I'll have to do it twice to clear out the engine controller there. It's a GM thing. <laughs> Maybe it's an all tell thing. I always have to clear out GM codes twice, so. There we go. All codes are cleared. ABS light should be off. Customer should be happy as a clan. You have to ask yourself, are my nuts crusty and swollen? If they are, you might need the Astro Tools 78204 half inch drive, half size thin wall lug nut socket set from 17.5 to 22.5. That we have right here. Breaking her out, just got her 22 and a half because this little Chevrolet's got swollen and crusty nuts. Now they slip right on. Look at that. I love it. Ooh, that, one's, that one's a little more swole. That nut's split. We're just doing the back. These half size sockets are amazing. Actually, our friends at Astro Tools came out with an entire socket set that's half size. It's not just wheel nuts. Um, I'll have to show you, I've got those also. And what you use them for is here in the rust belt is we're oftentimes, you know, beating a socket onto a fastener. So you're, you're going back and forth from metric to American and you know, if there's anything in between, some sizes there's not uh, anything in between like, you know, 14 and a 15. But now that we have half sizes, now we can just, we can beat on sockets all day long.
Yeah, so that's cool. There's that. I don't know where my sticker went. I labeled them with a marker. And then uh, here's their little ones. And this goes, I think, from 10 and a half, or no, I'm sorry, 9 and a half, right? Yeah, it goes from 9.5 mm all the way up to 19.5 mm. So you can do that. We haven't smashed or beat them yet. They're still brand new. Still got the oil on them, but rest assured, they will get smashed on and beat on in our shop. So show. Put these back. This is a drawer of things just went really bad drawer. It's the uh, easy outs. You got your bits here, your sockets from Astro, their version of like a turbo socket, strip fastener, bolt removers. You know, so they work pretty good. Got them from Astro. Got these from Astro. Flank fight. This is for uh, damaged wheel nuts. You can bash these babies on there. They grip pretty good. Only used a couple of these ones. I've got another bigger one in my toolbox I like using. And all kinds of stuff. What else? Oh, we got their flank Astro Tools flank bite wrenches. Similar design. Got the flank bite in the uh, box end and the open end. There's that. Bad, bad times. This drawer is open. Bad times. Damn, see that's fancy. Alright, got her fired up. We'll go take her for a rip. See what the brakes feel like. Feel pretty good so far. It's been a pretty nice February. We're at the near the end of February. Every day's been in the 40s. It's been great. The brake pedal feels pretty. Are we turning, dude, or what are we doing here? Oh, change his mind must be. We'll go down here to the park. We'll do a couple ABS stops with it. Somebody comes down here and blows donuts all the time. They've always got this all tore up down here. All right, ABS kicked on. I felt that. Baby shit off 155,000 on her. Not bad. And uh, that's it, folks. So there's the end of part two. Sorry to drag it out for two long days or two long episodes, rather, of changing that ABS valve. But that's what's involved with it. You got, you know, frig around with lines and rust and all that garbage here, at least in the salt belt, you do. And then, you know, the bleeder problem and got to program it and so on and so forth you saw the process hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully it makes sense to you or if maybe if you're having yours done at a shop you understand what they've done uh, perhaps or maybe it's giving you courage to do it yourself or pawning off on somebody else so no good transition from that one but comment section folks questions comments concerns find us on the insta facebook
you guys know where we're at. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.